the cloud disperses without rain and men and animals die. In the deserts of southern Arabia, there is no rhythm of the seasons, no rise and fall of sap, but empty wastes where only the changing temperature marks the passage of the years. It is a bitter, desiccated land which knows nothing. Things have left fire-blackened stones at camping sites a few faint tracks polished on the gravel plains. Elsewhere, the winds wipe out their footprints. They live here, the world into which they were born. And before them, they know no other way. Alfred Thesiger is the last of England's great desertors. He follows that peculiarly British tradition established by Burton, Doughty, Lawrence, Bertram, Thomas, and St. John Philby. I tried to write something that wasn't just a travel book. I wanted to or try to explain what the desert has meant to the Alps, how it has made them what they are. Today, his mother's home in Chelsea is where he lives when he's in London. At the age of 56, he's still traveling. Recently back from a five-month journey in the mountains of the Yemen, he already plans to return. I've often wondered why deserts have this fascination for me. Perhaps it's something to do with my childhood, when I did my first long journey on a camel before I was a year old. The Times, 1910. On June the 4th, at Addis Ababa, Abyssinia, the Honorable Mrs. Wilfred Thesiger of a son. Wilfred Patrick Thesiger was born in a mud hut, which in those days housed the British legation. His father had been recently appointed the British minister in Addis Ababa. It was to mean an unusual childhood for his sons.